Hi everybody, just a brief video today to look at a couple of tools within Civil 3D that are going to help us with uh, visualization or give us some visibility into the objects within our model in maybe a way that we hadn't looked at before. Now, these tools are not unique to Civil 3D, instead they're AutoCAD core functionality. So they would be available in any AutoCAD-based application including Map, Civil 3D, AutoCAD Architecture, uh, Plant 3D, uh, anything that's, that's got AutoCAD as its base. So how these work, let's take a quick look. Um, I'm starting with a small site plan that's got a parking lot, I've got a building, I've got a swept path uh, shown inside the, the parking lot and that's showing a service vehicle, how it's going to maneuver around the building and then um, unload its contents into the storage area in the back of the building here. Let's say I was working on that with a colleague in the office who's currently away from the office visiting with a customer, you know, but they'll, they'll be back later. I've maybe got a question whether or not the location of my, my vehicle or the swept path is the way they would like to see it. And um, they're not here to ask at this point, so I'm going to wait for them to get back in. And in the meantime, I'm going to move on to other projects. Now, the challenging thing is if, if I'm interacting with multiple people on multiple jobs, I don't want to have to be getting in and out of models constantly to, hey, take a look at this. What do you think of this? Um, it would be a lot easier if I could maybe just capture this on the screen. And then when that person was back, I could instant, instantaneously restore it no matter what model I was in. And I can do that using the concept of what's called a slide. So the command we're going to look at first is M slide. So we'll type that in. And then it's going to ask us where we would like to create this slide file. It's got an SLD extension. Slides can be used for many things in, in the AutoCAD world. This is one, one application of the slide. So uh, I'm going to put that in my desktop in my Tuesday folder here. By default, it's the name of the file that I'm in. We'll say save, and it captures that information. Now, I'm not limited to just one. I can have as many of these as I'd like. Maybe there's another question up here about the entrance. I'd like to get a little input on. We'll say M slide. Go back to my desktop, my Tuesday folder, and we'll call this one uh, finished one. And we'll say save. All right. Once I've created those slides, then what I'm going to do, uh, I don't even have to be in this drawing anymore, so we'll close out of that. I don't have any, any, more, uh, you know, any more work that I need to do in there. I can move on to the next project. Let's say in this project we're uh, monitoring the excavation of material from a particular site, and I'm doing that through a, a series of surfaces. And while I'm doing that, the individual that I was collaborating with on the last job happens to walk into the room and I can say, hey, I've got a question on that. Uh, you know, I want you to take a look at my swept path. Without having to get out of this file, I can go right to the command V slide by typing that in. Going back to that folder, here's uh, the first slide. We'll say open and it immediately displays that for me on the screen. All right, it's instantaneous. The other thing is, is it's uh, non-destructive. It's not a persistent uh, piece of geometry. Uh, essentially, if I were to pan or zoom or anything, it goes away. I can continue working on this model like I did before. If we were to go back into uh, V slide, take a look at the uh, second image, we would see the entrance where we could have maybe a short conversation about what was going on there. If it warranted it, I could open the model. We could go in and make edits or edits within it. But for right now, if we uh, just instead wanted to view it, we could view it, uh, um, you know, uh, correspond on, on what we might want to do with that and then move on from there. Okay, so I'll pan and that goes away. So in this file now, maybe I'd like to take the slide concept a little bit further. Maybe it's it's not just an interaction between me and, and a colleague. Maybe I could also share that information with somebody else. Uh, I could send that slide file to somebody that has AutoCAD and then using vSlide, navigating to that slide image, it pops up on their screen. They're able to view it just the same way that I did. No object enabler, whether they have AutoCAD, they have Civil 3D. I'm not even certain that the slide contents, if that format is uh, changes with release, we might even be able to view it in older ones as well. I'd have to try that. But we can also use the slides to maybe show progression. So for example, I mentioned before that in this file I had a series of surfaces that is showing um, excavation on a particular project so I can monitor how much either material has been added to the site or removed from the site. So I've got surfaces here that, that represent that. I've got an existing ground surface. 
Um, I've got another surface here that if we uh, set the surface properties to display that one in five background or one in five design, we'll bring that up. We can see that, you know, here's where an area is, is started to be excavated. And I've got a series of surfaces that show that progression. Now I've kind of just named them, I don't want to say at random, but I've, I've named them by number. I've got temporary surfaces, final, things like that. But if I wanted to show progression, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be toggling through surfaces and, and screenshots and things like that. So let's undo and let's see how maybe we could use the same concept of the M slide, V slide in this instance. So first thing I want to do is if I'm going to be looking at a particular area, and I'm going to be showing progression over time. I want to make sure that every time I capture a slide, I'm always looking from the same orientation. So I'm going to use the command view. And when we go into view, uh, I'm with current selected, we'll go ahead and create a new one here, and I can call this Tuesday for right now. All right. Uh, I'm going to set it to just the current display. We're not going to worry about to keep the defaults the same. We'll say OK, and then anytime I'm going to capture a new slide, I would come back and restore the, uh, the view Tuesday so that every time it was captured, it was always in the same orientation. So let's, uh, let's cancel out of that. You'll see I've already got one in here that's called uh, Master. So we'll just kind of pan this off to the side. We'll say View. We'll come back to Master, and we'll say Set That Current. We'll say OK. Here's the area that we're working in. All right, I've already made a series of slides, so whether I'm, you know, looking here or not, uh, I don't, I'm not creating more, so the location of where I am or even the drawing is a bit irrelevant. I could be in any drawing for this to work. As a matter of fact, let's just uh, create a new one here. We'll say new, we'll say save. I'm going to put that in my Tuesday folder, and we'll just call this um, slides. Okay, just to have a separate file. All right, totally different file. Let's close out of phase one. Save changes to that. Nope. And we'll use the command V slide. Just like before. V slide will say 01. Immediately, instantaneously shows me my existing ground. We'll hit the up arrow for V slide. Let's come down to slide number two. Second one in the progression. We'll say V slide. Number three, next one, the progression. And then V slide, number four, last one in the progression. All right, so great way of doing it. But man, it would be nice if I didn't have to keep saying V slide all the time, if it would just bang through the images on its own, that I could kind of watch the progression from here. And I can do that. I can do that through a concept of what's called a script. I'm going to pan. You notice my... Uh, um, views are not persistent, so they go away. Uh, I'm going to right-click on my screen out here. We'll create a new text document. That text document, let me drag it into here. We're going to create a script file to automate that process to go through those images for us. So I'm going to say uh, vslide. A script file is nothing more than what I would type in at the command line. So we'll say vslide, and the first slide was 01. Then we'll say vslide 02. V slide 03 and V slide 04. Okay, now before we finish, first thing we think about, well, if the system was going to go through 1, 2, 3, 4, it might bang through those pretty quick. I don't know how much time it's going to leave them on the screen. Ideally, it's not going to wait around. It's just going to jump from one to the next. So before you know it, it'll probably be on 04. So to control that, I'm going to put in a, what's called a delay, and we'll set this for... 4,000. What that is is 4,000 uh, 4, milliseconds or 4 seconds. So I'll, I'll have at least a 4 second delay between, uh, between images. Um, I don't like going less than 4. I'll do a copy and paste here for these. I don't like going less than 4 because it really doesn't give you a lot of time to uh, discern what it is you're looking at. And the other thing is, is if the time sequence gets to be shorter than it takes to process to get the image on on the screen sometimes it'll uh it'll have a tendency to have a couple of the slides maybe drop out or not display so we'll go with three or four seconds as the maximum or minimum delay that we would have in between them so we're going to view the first one delay four seconds second one delay third delay four delay and you know what when it's done 
uh, I want it to repeat. We'll have it go through again so it just doesn't stop. So the command we're going to use for that is our script. And then the key is at the end, you're going to put a space because a space constitutes a, a carriage return or an enter in a script. So basically, if uh, when my slides are done displaying, I would execute the command R script, hit enter, and then it would automatically uh, rerun the same script we just did. Okay, so that's all we would put in there. It's not rocket science. I mean, I like to call the slides one, two, three, four because uh, then I can reuse the same uh, the same script. But if you wanted to actually put in physical names for that, you could do that as well. So we'll go ahead and uh, let's give this uh, the proper extension. We'll say save as. It can't have a TXT extension. It's got to have an SCR extension. So we're going to come down to desktop. We'll say Tuesday. And I'm going to call this, uh, we'll say demo.scr. And we'll say save. All right. Move this off to the side here. Let's go ahead, uh, working with the same premise that anything that can live within a civil 3D or AutoCAD environment can be dragged and dropped in, and it'll figure it out for us uh, how to run it. Let's go ahead and go to the desktop. We'll come down to my folder here. Here's demo, the one we just created. I'm going to click and hold on that, drag that into my environment, and let go. We'll give that a moment to, uh, to process. We see there's slide one is our existing conditions. Four seconds later, we see uh, first state of progression. Four seconds later, we see the second. Four seconds later, we'll see the third uh, and final. And then the next four seconds will be back to existing. All right, very quick, very easy. Um, if we had Camtasia or something like that, we could capture it. I mean, there's a lot of different ways we could do it. It's just one more use for dealing with slides. Uh, one more, I don't want to say trivia, but uh, if you're working with scripts and slides, like I said, maybe I didn't say, this technology or these concepts, these features have been around for the uh, at least 20 years, probably closer to 25 years. If you had an involved script that was going to keep running, showing a bunch of uh, images, and you wanted to stop and pause and maybe uh, speak to one of the slides for just a moment, you'd hit the backspace command. So that... Uh, that one slide just came up. We hit backspace. Oops. There we go. We hit backspace. Once we hit uh, backspace, it should pause. All right. It's not uh, not processing anymore. It's just hanging out right there. We can speak to that one. And if we want to continue, the command is resume. So if we hit resume and hit enter, it should uh, continue on its way uh, from that back to existing and then moving forward again. All right, so scripts, very powerful thing. Slides can be a very helpful thing. Marrying them together, we can even do some more useful things. We can share slides with folks outside the office. No object enabler, a uh, very um, multifaceted tool that's been around for a long time, affords us some visibility and uh, views into our data that maybe we hadn't really thought about before. So old commands, still, uh, still very useful today. Hope this information has been helpful. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya.